Hi everyone, my name is Celia. I'm a software developer and Python fangirl. That's how I introduce myself every time. And I'm going to talk to you about what's written on that screen. Um, I'm going to begin by giving you a short intro or of this talk. So um, back in April, uh, I attended DjangoCon as a speaker where I talked about algorithms and why I think that it's important that we continue studying them even after we finish university or after we get that, uh, we pass that interview. Um, and um, these are some main points which I made. Uh, that it's really good as a mental exercise because it keeps your skills sharp and um, the more studying you put into this, the more knowledge you get out of it, that it breaks routine, that after a while we might get tired of writing pipelines or uh, websites or whatever and uh, this is like doing that really nice puzzle on the beach. Um, that it helps you with the understanding of logic, that you understand how certain things are implemented and how to make them faster and better. Uh, and also, it's a social duty that I think that we have as developers because um, algorithms nowadays are the buzz buzzword out there and they have a really bad reputation. Uh, with the people that are not knowledgeable in this field, uh, they think that it's biased and uh, that, I don't know, algorithms rule the world or that it's going to cost you that um, health insurance. And I think it's our duty that we know them better and we can better explain them to other people. I, I, I just think that this is like community service in a way. So I came out with this wobble scheme that I use in my training. It's not perfect. Um, last time in the April talk, I focused on the resources part. I talked about what kind of websites, books, and um, problems, and all sorts of resources that I use in my training. And this time, I want to focus on the gamification step, the one in the left corner. And um, I don't know, my plan is that if I ever give another talk on the subject, the next one will be on the keep track of your progress and the analysis. Right. So what is this gamification shenanigans anyway? So the gamification is the application of game design elements and principles in non-game contexts. Uh, its main focus is to combine work and play and to make work more interesting. Take a look at this picture. This comes from a life hacker uh, article, which was very interesting, about how to gamify in your life. And it was also focused a bit on fitness. So it's what, oh, it was like calling your mom, two points, doing that exercise, five points. And uh, basically, it was introducing game, the game time elements to habits that you're trying to introduce, like, I don't know, brushing your teeth every night or whatever. The idea is that this should make it a bit more fun to accomplish. Um, gamification is also highly used in training-like experiences, like, um, I don't know, when you're let's say you're in a volunteering company and you're trying to get each other better and you have all sorts of games and all uh, that kind of stuff to ease you into knowing each other and all that. So why does it work? Um, if you look at the neuroscience behind gamification, it all comes down to this little fella, dopamine or the feel-good hormone. Uh, this is rewarded whenever you do something uh, that is that is rewardful in a way, such as eating or sleeping or um, playing a game. So gamification focuses on uh, giving instantaneous feedback, which might not otherwise be available, uh, because by earning rewards in that whole gamification system, 
um, you begin to associate learning with a positive experience and positive emotions. And this will make you want to do them more and more and more. Think about um, the kids that should go to bed at a certain hour and after uh, the parents uh, turn off the lights and everything, they just uh, go to the computer and play video games till the morning. And think about the reasons why those children might, do, might risk it all, because if they get caught, they will be punished, um, to play some video games. Um, dopamine is uh, the primary neurotransmitter involved in the brain's reward system and it's also responsible for motivation, controlled movement, like I couldn't believe this, like just walking straight across the room, dopamine is involved in this, memory and focus, which are all elements that you need in order to learn. Also. Serotonin is released uh, whenever you remember past successes uh, or whenever you achieve a challenging mission. And serotonin, together with dopamine, help in balancing mood um, and appetite. If you ever wondered why some people manage to work all those long hours and forget to eat, this is the reason. Um, also, the thrill and excitement of playing a game is the result of endorphins being released. Uh, endorphins are the nature's painkiller. Uh, they reduce stress levels and uh, insomnia and anxiety levels and can create a sense of euphoria. Combined with all the other neurotransmitters, this creates uh, the perfect environment for learning. Also, uh, gamification helps with cognitive overload. If you ever feel like your brain is going to explode from too much information, uh, this is going to make it seem that much easier. Um, and also, it creates an emotional bond to the task. Um, and this is very important because it has been noticed that uh, attention spans are affected by the emotional response that you have to a certain task. So, um, we know how this works now. How was this implemented before? As I said, uh, gamification is a buzzword. Um, there are tons of articles on the internet about um, how to implement gamification in your business. Uh, this talk mostly about how to make your uh, employees more, uh, work more efficiently, uh, but also how to make students learn better and all that is a subject of uh, research. You can find um, articles on, from universities on how to implement gamification in actually um, teaching computer science and data structures and algorithms and everything, so it's not unheard of. Um, and also, games are fun, <laughs> let's be honest. So uh, this, is, um, this is a schema from one of the, um, the research that uh, I've read when preparing for this talk. It's uh, from the University of Jakarta, and I added a source there. And this is basically saying that all the, those three elements combined uh, bring to a better learning outcome. First, there, are, there is the cognitive support. Uh, this comes mostly in the form of visualization. Uh, originally, this has been textbooks or explanation, but uh, nowadays, uh, there are better and more dynamic forms of visualization, such as um, um, graphs that uh, have animation inside them and you can see, for example, an algorithm being played step by step. Uh, also, learning instructions are very important. Uh, by learning instructions, I mean um, instructional activities such as the problem statement, what do you need to do, the resources that are put, like the visualization or, um, I don't know, examples, sorry and uh, also the method of evaluation. When teaching something, it's really good to know how you're going to make sure that uh, you're, going, you're on the right track. 
And then comes the gamification part, which helps with engagement and making everything stick long term. Because um, the cognitive support tools fail to engage long term. It's very interesting in the moment. It's like, ooh, colors, interesting. But if you ask someone like two weeks from now, do you still remember what you read about? That might not be the case. So here are some gamification features that you can find uh, implemented. In order for uh, an activity to be gamified, you don't need to have all of them at the same time. Um, as I've read in multiple articles, just because you have some gamification features implemented, that doesn't mean that it's being implemented with success or that it's having a good uh, effect on uh, the users. But um, all of these, like narrative, um, for example, it's a known fact that um, it's much easier to remember stories than facts or points or uh, achievements. Uh, challenges are really, really fun. Feedback to know how you're doing, if you're go uh, doing well or not. Uh, personalization is the most important one, I think, but I'm going to talk about that later. Rules and so on. Um, so this isn't new, as I said. This has been implemented in various places. For example, has anyone used Duolingo from here? It's fun, isn't it? But uh, apart from saying that I'm a girl and I like white shirts, I, I'm not sure if I learned much from there. But everything is set to levels with the topic and points and nice uh, looks. And it doesn't feel like studying a uh, language textbook style, like writing stuff over and over and over again, getting bored at some point. And um, Khan Academy, for example, um, is a very, very good example of how things are implemented. Or the Nike app, where you can run and surpass your friends and, um, I don't know, do physical exercise while having fun at the same time. Um, doing a Google list search will bring you ideas on how to add gamification to your business, for example, and how to make clients more open. Um, when I when I had my first, uh, my first job ever, the first thing that we had to do on the first day was to build a tower out of marshmallows and spaghetti. Uh, it seemed very, very weird at the time, but at the same time, now that I think about it, it was fun and it helped us open up more. Um, but since I'm talking about algorithms, um, I'm going to show you a couple of sites that I use. For example, HackerRank has badges. Um, at this point, they don't have a lot of badges and more, most of them are like for something simple like um, days of Python or days of code or whatever and they have medals and some other stuff which I haven't added here but it's really, really nice and it helps. Also on lead code you can you can view your progress quite a lot. They have tracks, for example, like the one with binary search, and they have problems uh, that uh, target binary search, which is nice. And you can also see how many of your attempts have been correct versus how many wrong attempts you had, and also how fast your solution was compared to all other solution across the website, which is brings up the competitive side of people. Um, there is this website, which I haven't tried much, but I've heard of, Coding Game, uh, where each um, problem actually has a story and you have nice graphics and uh, this is like the first level and you have to write something in the loop such that you, you, um, you attack all the, the ships that come to you and you have levels, and it really, really feels like a game. And in, in the beginning, I haven't advanced much with it, but it might make you think, um, how am I going to learn? How am I, go am I going to get better at uh, programming or algorithms with these types of games? But these types of games uh, just push you a bit further, like make, make you feel like you have a bit of fun instead of, um, I don't know, dry, repetitive tasks. Um, so can we do better? Um, before we can think about this, we need, uh, we need to read the instruction manual first. 
I've mentioned uh, some of the features of gamification and um, also um, something about learning is this chart, the Bloom's taxonomy, and it talks about ordering uh, cognitive skills on a hierarchy that helps the process of learning. So in order to reach the high top and be able to create, in this case, maybe your own algorithms or problem statements, or maybe write your own contests, we need to start at the bottom. We've seen before that in, uh, instruction design is very important. So uh, when starting this, we need to take into consideration that the first step is understanding the basics. Remember facts like understand and understand basic knowledge, like what is a loop, how to do a sort, etc. cetera. Then, uh, I'd put understanding complexities under this category, but if you're anything like me, computing complexities is sometimes harder than solving the problem. Uh, then you need to apply your knowledge, you need to be able to apply this knowledge in new situations, new problems, you need to be able to read a problem statement and know that you're going to have to solve it using binary search, for example. Uh, you need to be able to analyze and evaluate. Feedback is very important when applying knowledge. Are you doing it correctly? Are you on the right track? Um, and also, there was a TED talk by Gabe uh, Zischerman uh, that talked about the legs of gamification. Um, constraints drive creativity. For example, if you have to solve a problem and you, you know you have to do it in a certain amount of time or um, uh, the solution needs to run a certain amount of uh, seconds or that you cannot use division, <laughs> for example, then this is going to make you more creative. Um, for example, when using, when competing in competitive um, algorithm contests, um, I use Python all the time because I like Python, but we all know that C is faster, so I need to come up with creative solutions to make it pass the time constraints, otherwise I'm in trouble. Uh, you need to have the ease of failure, which is you need to fail and know that the world is not going to end, just like in a game, if your hero dies, you can just uh, try again or go back to the last saved point. You need to have perseverance. You need to know that uh, doing it once or twice or once every blue moon is not going to cut it, but you're going to need to have fun doing it because uh, we're not Sisyphus pushing up the boulder. And speed and pressure seem to help. Um, I hate competition, so I hate speed and pressure. Uh, but some and most people thrive on this. Um, also, levels need to be designed carefully. You need to have uh, just the right amount of hard or easy, because if you do them too easy, then you're going to get bored. Or if you do them too hard, you're going to give up eventually. So let's make a game out of it. Now that we have the rules, let's ask ourselves some questions and design the perfect game to study algorithms or anything else for that matter. Uh, but first, time for a challenge because this is a talk about gamification. Here you have some code and two requests. Uh, whoever is going to find me after this talk and give me the time complexity and find um, the edge case that I mentioned in the talk, it's going to receive this box of chocolate. So um, have fun, may the best win. So back to our topic, ask yourself, what is your favorite game and why? Do you recognize any two of these logos? <laughs> it's from World of Warcraft. <laughs> This is my favorite game. So um, I, I try to think about what are some things that I like about World of Warcraft. Um, th it's the story, the fact that you can go through the lore and do quests and find out all sorts of backstories and characters and blah, blah. Then the achievements. I really, really like uh, those things like uh, get friendly with a certain race or uh, stuff like that, the community that you're able to play with other people, uh, the challenges, and by challenges I mean the dungeons, and the fact that you can level up um, and create a character that in level one can get killed by a rat to something overpowered. 
So let's think about the story. If the story is important, um, when solving algorithms, do we like problem statements with a story or do we like a story behind a collection of problems? Uh, for example, do we want uh, to solve a track about binary search or do we want problems that have a story in the statement, such as, um, I don't know, Jane and Mary try to decide how many chocolates each is going to get, yada, yada, yada. Then with achievements, do we, need, do, do we like badges? Do we, like, do we need a progress bar? Do we need to see how much we've solved, how many problems this week, or uh, how many days in a row, or stuff like that? Whatever, uh, whatever uh, you, helps you best, whatever you like the most, and is going to help you get more uh, productive. Then the community. Do you like to compete with friends, or do you like to compete against friends? Do you want to talk to them about solutions and see whoever come, came with the best solution? Or do you just like to win against them in a contest and ha ha, I did the best rating? Um, do you like challenges? Do you, sh should you have a 30 day challenge and solve one problem each day? Or um, do you, do you want, like solving very hard problems from time to time? Or do you like uh, solving old stuff in new ways. And with the level up, um, should you level up through the number of problems that you solved or should you do it through a rating system? For example, with the number of problems solved might be an easy way of leveling up, but after a point, it says nothing about your progress because you could just be solving easy problems. But a rating system is not very good on its own either because I'm gonna give you an example. So. Um, Last week, I took part in a Code Forces contest, and I dropped more than 100 points for the reason that I was at a jazz concert in the park, and I participated from my phone, which was not very friendly with the code, and because of that, I made very, uh, a lot of bad uh, submissions, and after a while, I just gave up because it would interpret one of my characters in an uh, ASCII code, and then I just dropped in rating. Like right now, my rating is the one of a beginner, but does that say anything about me? Or does it say something about that particular contest? Also, analysis is a very powerful tool. You need to know where you're at. Uh, right now, I don't have m many ideas on how to evaluate the progress. Um, you could keep a bullet journal and um, I don't know, keep track of how many problems you solved, how many of those were easy, hard, or medium, um, how, um, if you solved more on this website or that website, if you solved more through contests or just on your own. Um, I don't know, little things that like this that matter to you, but um, I'm still thinking on this one, so um, hang on tight. And now, the boss level. Um, what is the point of all of this? The point is to keep up the motivation, um, to encourage fluid intelligence. Fluid intelligence um, involves being able to think and reason abstractly and solve problems. For example, um, coming up with problem-solving uh, problem strategies on on the spot without reading beforehand in a textbook. It's very useful in our field. It's also to reduce stress levels, um, to reward yourself short term. Uh, they keep saying about uh, millennials that they like instant gratification, and it's true. The biggest reward of you studying algorithms should be that you'll become better and better at the end. But sometimes a little push down the road is really nice and appreciate it. Um, also, remember the, the research that I mentioned earlier? This is a graph that is showing the results of uh, students taking the test for the first and second time after just reading about algorithms in a book and after playing a game. In both cases, when they took the test the second time, they all took straight 10s or A's, the maximum grade. 
But look at the difference between just reading about them or doing them in a fun way. I think that gamification uh, help, uh, help solve problems um, that we, until now, we might have thought that it's some, somewhat our duty to do it, and if it's hard, we should just do it, even if it's hard, but that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be fun. And my last, my last point is, uh, don't be ashamed if you need, uh, if you feel the need to gamify something that you love. This doesn't mean that you love it any less. It just means that li life can get messy and e it's really easy to lose focus of what's important to you. It's one of the really bad points of growing up and being an adult. Uh, so gamifying something and making it fun doesn't mean that um, you're not good at it or that this isn't, this isn't important. And um, that's it. Game over. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you very much for your enthusiastic presentation. And now it's a good time to raise some questions. Hi, thank you for your talk. When you try to create a gamification environment in a corporate team, how can you address the fear to lose from people? Hmm, very good question. Um, I think that by making it a, a really um, safe environment to fail, like if you fail, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, Let's joke about it. Let's try it again. Next time I'll show you. Next time I'll be better than you. Ha ha. Um, I think that by, by just implementing a carefree attitude towards this and not treating it like a, a sort of evaluation towards a raise or um, a promotion, then this way is going to make people think that it's okay to fail. It's okay to try. It's okay not to feel in the mood to participate once in a while. Uh, and take all the benefits of this sort of activities. If, did I answer your question? Well, yeah, but I think it's more on the, uh, on the person. Uh, yes, I know that there is, I mean, there is not an easy solution because even if it's something that is not tied to promotion, it's just the subject's feeling respect to the others is independently to yeah from but in in my experience the community is a really big factor in this if you have uh, friends to do it with or if um, you um, I don't know have a really strong community behind you then they're going to motivate you a bit they're going you're going to feel left out if they compete without you for example or they're going to just encourage you come on let's try um, so I think that the community is a really, really strong factor in this. Thank you. Further questions? Okay, well, uh, if anyone has the answer, I have the chocolates, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, here. I actually have a question. Do you maybe know some examples where this kind of gamification is applied in mainstream education, like brick and mortar universities? Unfortunately, no. Um, what I've studied, for example, uh, I, I don't mean that it was like a jail <laughs> or something, but we didn't have this kind of reward system. Uh, we, we did have like, um, frequent hackathons, which felt a bit like a contest, which were nice. Uh, but I've seen recently at um, lower levels of education, like uh, kindergarten or the first levels of school, that they, they're trying to make things more and more fun in a way that we didn't have it when we were young. OK, thanks. I just, I just discovered that in France, there is, for mathematician teacher, you can submit exercise to the students, and the, the elements are not the same for every student, so you, uh, you cannot copy on your, on your, on your co-workers. 
and you can try as much as you want and you got the best score out of everything. So you, if you are the best one, you t try once and it's okay. Or if you are bad, you try 10, 10 times and then you, uh, you achieve that. And it's a good way just to make simple exercise and to let the students play for a real exercise, not just for fun. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> Thanks. We've got time for one more question. Okay, thanks.